my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Today, July 23rd, we're celebrating the Feast of Saint Bridget of Sweden, a very interesting saint. She died in 1373 and she was canonized very soon after her death. She had such a fame of sanctity. Saint John Paul II named her co-patroness of Europe in the year 2000. She was a very amazing saint, mother of eight children, loving wife to her husband. And then once her husband died and her kids were already old enough, she dedicated her life to God. Let me correct myself there, because she was dedicating her life all along, not only once her husband was dead, but her whole life was that of serving God through her marriage, throughout all her life. And it wasn't an easy life. God actually spoke to her quite a bit. She's known for the revelations that she received from God. When she was seven, she had a dream where she saw a suffering Jesus and that dream stuck to her. And from that moment, she wanted to serve God. And she did that again through her marriage. She had a very early marriage, as was usual during the Middle Ages. Bridget was married when she was 13 to a young man. She had eight children. She truly loved her husband. And she lived a life of piety and charity towards the poor. It's a consequence of that revelation that she had received from God. She was serving God and the poor in her family in her husband, in her children. Then her husband died, her children were older and she sold everything she had. She gave it to her children, some, some to charity. And then she went off to religious life. She wanted to found, she felt from God that he wanted her to found a new religious order. And so she did, and many young women followed her. She was so well known that the king of Sweden donated to her a palace and a number of property so that she could have a new convent. And when things were getting started, she felt from God the call to go to Rome so that she could help the Pope realized that he had to come back to Rome. The Pope in that time, the Popes had changed the residence to Avignon in France. And so this saint was being asked by God in a revelation that she had, that she needed to go to Rome to talk the Pope into coming back. She would never see that the Pope coming back to Rome, which happened after her death, but she dedicated her life to that, leaving behind the new monastery that she never saw herself. 
the religious order that she founded was approved and it's still existent, many young women have joined it and have followed the way to sanctity through that. A great saint that we can say always followed God's will, always was open to what God was telling her and willing to follow that. I think it's interesting, the life of this saint, to understand and to pray about the gospel that we read today. When Jesus is telling his disciples about the parables, the disciples are, don't understand too well why Jesus speaks to the crowd in parables. And he says, Jesus says, because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. I speak to them in parables because they look but do not see and hear but do not listen or understand. Gross is the heart of, the, of this people. They will hardly hear with their eyes. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes, continues Jesus, because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Mysterious words from our Lord. But when we think of our own experience, when we think of the people around us, and then we look at the life of someone like today's saint, we realize that there is a big difference between listening to God, truly listening to God, and just living a life without paying much attention. St. Bridget had her heart open. And when she heard something from God, she followed. She was obedient, she was generous, and she was willing to leave anything behind. To follow God's will, to do what she was being asked, whether she was being married, at 13, whether she was having more children, whether she was being asked to found a new religious order, whether she was asked by God to leave that order and go back to Rome to help the popes come back to the holy city, there she is, listening to God, being docile. Am I listening to you, Lord? Do I have a docile heart? Maybe my heart is cross, like Jesus says, and it's hard to hear and hard to do what I'm being told because I'm distracted with so many other things, because I'm just dull. Lord Jesus, I want to hear what you're telling me. Maybe we won't have revelations like St. Bridget had, and we don't need to wait for them to happen, but God is constantly speaking to our hearts, telling us things in different ways, maybe through this meditation, maybe through a homily on a Sunday Mass, maybe through something your mom is telling you, or something you heard from a friend, maybe from an idea that came into your head. Do we follow those promptings or do we just push them aside, connecting again to our music, to our entertainment, like nothing had happened? Lord, I want to hear your voice and follow it. Give me the grace so that like St. Bridget, I can be generous, following your call and doing God's will. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions affections and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. 
I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.